It's two to two. Huh? It's two to two. Okay. Your police tell your officers they just passed me. Okay, they just passed you? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll let them know, okay? Go, go outside and flag them down, okay? Okay, uh, my mother-in-law just got here, too. Okay. Okay. All righty. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. From in Hollywood. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, my God. Oh, here I go. Oh. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to tell about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the Radio Talk Show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with a story here. <laughs> Sunday, March 30th has been proclaimed as Black Marriage Day by Mayor Ron Littlefield of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Mayor Claude Ramsey of Hamilton County, Tennessee. <laughs> On March 30th, first things first. We'll join more than 200 other organizations and places of worship across the country to celebrate Black Marriage Day. National organizers have set a goal to have 5,000 African-American married couples across America renew their sacred vows. So you see, it's not what you thought it was. You thought it was, let's get those black people married, and in reality it's, let's get those married people uh, who are black back in to renew their vows. Says here, first things first is urging local churches and organizations to encourage couples to show their support of marriage by conducting a vow renewal ceremony on that day. Dr. Rosano Slack, director of marriage, fathering, and family initiative, said, The black community is in need of a legacy of strong, healthy marriages. We encourage local churches to demonstrate their support for marriage in celebration of Black Marriage Day. Marriage in the African-American community is on the decline. Today, African-Americans have the lowest marriage rate of any racial group in the United States. Yes. They say that like it's a bad thing. says here, according to the U.S. Census, 43.3% of black men and 41.9% of black women in America have never been married. <laughs> in 30 years, the overall marriage rate in the United States declined by 17%, but for African Americans, it fell by 34%. Yes. Good work. Men. I'm not being facetious. I'm serious. Says here, it is estimated that 80% of all African-American children will spend their childhood living apart from their fathers, while an estimated 70% of African-American children are born to unmarried mothers. Now that part sucks. Dr. Slack said, first things first, wants to send a message to the next generation of black couples that long-lasting marriages are important. 
They say here there are many ways to celebrate Black Marriage Day 2008. First Things First encourages people to exhaust their creativity. And other programs that reach a range of the black community to include couples, singles, and youth. Let's talk about those numbers for a second. Somehow, this is discussed as if it is a negative about African Americans. That they have the lowest rate of marriage of anybody. But I must say, uh, the African American men who have somehow avoided marriage are smarter than the rest of us. They know how much marriage costs. They know how much divorce and alimony cost. They are frequently where the rubber meets the road. And just as African Americans have led us culturally, in terms of music, in terms of language, in so many ways, uh, it's my belief that African Americans are leading the way in terms of saying no to marriage. I think it's fantastic. Men, I don't care what kind of day they set a black marriage day, whatever they're going to call it, you are to resist resolutely. And to all our black brothers out there, and again, let me make this clear. Some people are going to think I'm being sarcastic or being facetious. I, I am drop-dead serious. I want to say to all our African-American male listeners, congratulations, men. You are leading the way. Once again, African-Americans are leading the way in this country, and I am thankful that you are showing us the way. I am. I mean, a debt of thanks. I I only wish my own people had the exact same accomplishment and were rejecting marriage the way African Americans are. I do. Your responses, please. Tap, tap, tap. Like this. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. What do you have against doing Nothing. My manhood. Future. It's the Tom Likes Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. This us into the Tom Likas Show newsroom. Dateline, Wichita, Kansas. Authorities are considering charges of the bizarre case of a woman who sat on her boyfriend's toilet. For two years. So long that her body was stuck to the seat by the time the boyfriend finally called police. Ness County Sheriff Brian Whipple said it appeared the 35-year-old Ness City woman's skin had grown around the seat. She initially refused emergency medical services, but was finally convinced by responders and her boyfriend that she needed to be checked out at a hospital. Wimble said, we pried the toilet seat off with a pry bar, and the seat went with her to the hospital. The hospital removed it. Wimble said investigators plan to present their report on Wednesday to the county attorney, who will determine whether any charges should be filed against the woman's 35-year-old boyfriend. Be out in a minute, honey. It's all his fault. See, it's the boyfriend's fault again. Whipple said she was not glued, she was not tied, it was just physically stuck to her body. It is hard to imagine, I still have a hard time imagining it myself. He told investigators he brought his girlfriend food and water and asked her every day to come out of the bathroom. The boyfriend called police on February 27th to report that there was something wrong with his girlfriend, Whipple said, adding that he never explained why it took him two years to call home. We can only speculate. <laughs> <laughs> police found the clothed woman sitting on the toilet, her sweatpants down to her mid-thigh. She was, quote, somewhat disoriented, and her legs looked like they had atrophied, Wimple said. 
She said that she didn't need any help, that she was okay and did not want to leave, he said. She was reported in fair condition at a hospital in Wichita, about 150 miles southeast of Nest City. Whipple said she has refused to cooperate with medical providers or law enforcement investigators. Authorities did not know if she was mentally or physically disabled. Well, take a guess. Police have declined to release the couple's names, but the house where authorities say the incident happened is listed in public records as the residence of Corey McFerrin. Good work, Corey. No one answered his home phone number. The case has been the buzz of Nest City, said James Ellis, a neighbor. I don't think anybody can make any sense out of it, he said. Ellis said he had known the woman since she was a child. But that he had not seen her for at least six years. <laughs> well, we can account for the last two. He said she had a tough childhood after her mother died of young age and apparently was usually kept inside the house as she grew up. She kind of likes it in there. At one time, the woman worked for a long-term care facility, he said, but he did not know what kind of work she did there. Of the bathroom incident, Ellis said, it really doesn't surprise me. What surprises me is somebody wasn't called in a bit earlier. More on this story as it becomes available. <laughs> I'll be out of the bathroom in a minute, honey. Is that a number one or a number two? It's a number two million. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Yes, somebody's proposing Black Marriage Day. Yeah, that's what we need. More black marriages. I say African Americans are leading the way culturally again. Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Big Tom. How you doing, Ron? I'm doing good, Big Tom. How you doing? Great. First time, long time. I love it. <laughs> yeah, big child. I'm 37. I'm a black male. I did the whole college thing, high school. I had a high school girlfriend. I mean, it was kind of serious. And she ended up hurting me in the long run right after college. So ever since then, I just never got married, man. I mean, I don't, I don't really see the point at this point. Unless I meet someone that just totally blows me away, I mean, I, I, I'm just not looking to get married right now. Well, I, even I, then, why buy when you can rent? Exactly, exactly. Because there's so many girls out there worth <laughs> There's so many girls out there for rent. <laughs> That's right. Once you've done Hertz, you can move on over to Avis. You know what I'm talking about? Exactly, exactly. And, I mean, you know, you usually when you meet a girl in a single spot or something like that, they're usually shocked that I'm... Um, I don't have any kids or anything like that. You usually meet a couple girls with a few kids but never been married. I don't know if that's one of the main factors as to why the percentage rate of black marriages is so low, but I can definitely tell you, I mean, I'm 37 and I'm happy right now not being married. I mean, I really don't think I'll be getting married anytime soon as well. See, I I just think that uh, all the black guys I know are very sensitive uh, to their wallets, very sensitive to how much things cost. Mm, yeah, definitely true. And I, definitely I, true. I think they are even more sensitive than just about anybody else as to the cost of getting married and especially of getting divorced. You know, black people have led the way in so many ways culturally in this society. I just think they're ahead of the game. I mean, I do agree with you on that, Tom. I mean... I mean, I, I I do think what you're doing is a good service to young men, but I do think as well that black young men are aware of a lot of the things that you're preaching to your uh, your students of today. That's I why mean, that's why we have so many black listeners, because because as I've always said, black men are hardwired for this stuff. <laughs> you know what? Pops never told uh, pops never taught me the the, the birds and the bees or or the game, like I guess you could say. Um, I guess I learned it growing up in the neighborhood from friends and things like that. I mean, I'm from a middle-class neighborhood, and I wasn't in, like, a gang-infested area or nothing like that. But, I mean, my mother and father still married to this day. They've been married for 50 years. I'm the youngest of five siblings. I mean, 
And to tell you the truth, Tom, only one of my siblings is married, and I'm the youngest of all of them. How do your parents feel about that? Um, <laughs> I think they think it's a byproduct of their arguments and us having to listen to them constantly on a constant basis. I mean, they loved each other to death, but, I mean, I grew up in a house that my parents bickered a lot. I mean, whether it was over the smallest things or big things, I mean... I don't, but my, my oldest sister, which is 47 years old at this time, she's never been married. Um, my brother, 44, never been married. Another brother, 42, never been married. My other sister, that's 39. She's the only one that's married out of the five of us. Wow, what happened to her? <laughs> she meet a rich guy or something? What happened to her? No, she meet a rich guy because the one she with is a joke. So oh boy. I, I don't know why she got married either. Maybe she's the one who shouldn't have gotten married. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ron. I appreciate the call. I, I appreciate you a lot. Uh, can you take me out? Well, since it's almost 420, go ahead and take me out with a bomb rip. All right, Ron. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Here's Tanya on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi long Tanya. Time, long time, many times. How are you? Long time listener, many time caller. <laughs> anyway, I think it's the it's the white man's fault that black people don't get married in the first place, and then they thumb, then they you know then they look. The, they look at black people like there's something wrong with them when they don't get married, when it's the white man's fault. This all goes back to slavery. Oh, it does, does it? It does. When they used to separate the families, and the families never had an opportunity to bond, they would sell off the husband. Well, that would make a lot of sense if I couldn't remember being a kid in the 60s, right. and I remembered a lot more married black couples when I was a kid than I do today. I grew up in the South Bronx. I was surrounded by black people. And they had parents, and the parents were married, and they all lived in the same place. So somehow, sometime between slavery and today, somehow people managed to get married and stay married. No, but you know what? I am black, and I know a lot of black people. And I know in the black community, there is a lot more, and and. You know, not just in recent years, but I'm talking like when my grandmother was growing up. There were a lot of single mothers. It may not have been talked about, but there were always... Not as many as today. Not as many as today. Not even I'm, close. Well, it, but I'm just saying, this has always been common in, in uh, black families, though. Not as common as today. It was always more than white families, because it's also a bigger uh, issue in the white communities than it was way back when. But uh, uh, back when I was a kid, there were a lot more intact black families than today. So I don't think it has as much to do with slavery as it does with other factors in society, everything from public assistance uh, to public mores to music videos to whatever. And I think across the board, no matter what race people are, there's less people getting married. They're getting married later. More people having kids out of wedlock. And I just think it's another issue where black people uh, have led the culture. Well, yeah, I mean, we we are trendsetters. We are the trendsetters. Everyone, That's right. We everyone steals from us. But I but I'm just saying that I think that the this really stems from slavery. That's all I'm saying. It really? Do you know any slaves? Uh, no, not not anymore. They've all passed on. But I see. Know. Are you are you married? No. No? You know any sharecroppers? Uh, I've known a few, yeah. Okay. They married? <laughs> yeah. Case closed. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thank you, Tanya. Love you. Appreciate the call. There goes Tanya. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Sam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Son, how are you? Oh, first time, long time. I love it. You know what? This is madness. A black marriage date? What are they thinking? <laughs> 
I mean, I mean, why would you want to celebrate that? You guys are leading the way. I mean, you you are so smart, you don't even know, because society today, a black woman, a black man can do well for themselves, so why should we get married? No doubt about it. And the philosophy you have taught, I've been teaching to the younger people, and I think this day should be banned forever. Because people say, well, we should get married. This is, as you said before, this is a thing for the poor. It's, you don't need to be married. It, it's for the dumb and the poor. You know what? Uh, I got to tell you, I, I, they have all this conversation about gay marriage. Gays want to get married. You know what? I wish they would take away the right to get married to us, okay? Because uh, wouldn't that be great? A woman comes to you and says, when are we going to get married? You say, well, I would love to marry you, honey, but um, <clears throat> it's illegal. Can't do it. And gays have it made. Exactly. They get to live their lives, then move on. They, they want to get married? <laughs> I'm all in favor. I think they should know the same misery the rest of us know. Amen, brother. Amen. Well, that's why I wanted to say that. Again, love what you're doing. You taught me so much more of the game. I'm passing it on. Good to blow me up. Of course I can, Sam. Like it. 1 800 time. 1 800 5800 866. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something and you've got your own little Bible going on. It's the Tom Like It Show. Uh, suggesting you celebrate the 6th annual Black Marriage Day. The way they're suggesting you celebrate is if you're a black couple and you are married, go renew your vows. Show your commitment to marriage. And I say African Americans have been leading the way. They're least likely to get married of any race. I think uh, it's fantastic. Sandy on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Oh, wait. It's a question, like, why are you so against, like, marriage? And I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. This is my first time, like, listening to the show and, like, you know, actually listening. To, well, a couple of times, but this is my first time calling in. And I'm just, like, baffled at what the callers are saying. I would think this is, like, a wonderful thing. Like, let's promote, like, you know, positive relationships. But you're saying no, so I don't understand it. I'm trying to understand, like, what's your mind frame? Like, why you hate marriage so much and why you, like, I, I don't think there's any benefit to men to get married. Why not? They're with one woman that loves them, like, that's there for them, like, 100% ride or die chick. Like Women are you know. a bunch of hoes and uh, hoe bags, and you know it. And the bottom line here is that you are better off being a free agent, getting it where you need to get it. If they need to get it where they need to get it, that's fine. And that way we don't have to pay your rent. We don't have to pay your grocery bill. We don't have to pay for your clothing, your car payments. Your student loans, none of that stuff. Wait a minute. Why can't she be an independent girl? Like, you know, this that's great. If you want to be independent, get your own apartment. <laughs> all women are not whole bags, though. Oh I didn't God. say all women are, but uh, an awful lot of them are. And the bottom line is this way you're free to do what or whoever you want. Wow. Are you serious? That's right. Are you married, Tom? No, I'm not. Oh, my God. Maybe if you got married, like you... I was married, and I learned it the hard way. But not all marriages, you know, not all marriages are bad or this. I didn't say all marriages are bad. Just like somebody's going to win the lottery this Saturday night, it's just probably not me. Wow. I don't know. I think what's going on in Tennessee is a good thing. 
I think it should be promoted. It's well, I don't know. I'm single and I'm African American, but I don't know. Like I want to get married. Like you're just scared. I'm sure you do. Women tend to gain through marriage, and men tend to lose. How so? There's what about the men that are gigolos that are like you know when they look at what's his name, Star Jones and Al. Like as soon as they got married. Boom, he quit his job. Like, it's a whole, like, it's a whole new era now. Like, men are gigolos. By the now. way, they just split up. Did you hear that? Because he's gay. Well, no, darling, that's your opinion. We don't know that for sure. I know that. His best friend's gay. He go to gay parties. He dress up as a, no, there's a lot. Well, of let's be honest. I, I don't know whether he's gay or not, but really, what other kind of man would marry Star Jones? Come on. Okay, I will argue with you on that. You one. can't argue with me on that. <laughs> but still, I, I mean, it's like it's like marrying the Weather Girls, for God's sake. No, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> no, you have to. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, you're discouraging the girls that are out there single, like that wants to meet their soulmate. What happens to our like? Oh, charming? stop with the soulmate stuff. This is all about money, and you know it. Money, though, Great, right? then you don't need to be married. Why not? I don't want to be with one man, though. Like, I don't want to be like a free agent. No one is stopping you from being with one man, but nobody needs to sign a contract uh, to agree to give us half of everything we earn. But what about the prenups? You can get a prenuptial agreement. You can get a prenuptial agreement, but it still costs. It costs money to get the agreement, and then women always threaten to overturn the agreement. You're better off just not doing it. Oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Wow. Wow. Hmm. I don't know, Tom. I hear your point, but I don't know. I mean, again, I understand why you want to get married, but why would a man want to do it? I mean, because he, he wants that one woman that's going to be there for you. But this him. doesn't guarantee you anything. You you know what? You, you, you are monogamous if you want to be monogamous, and if you don't want to be, it doesn't matter whether you're married, you won't be. Ooh. I mean, uh, Mrs. Elliot Spitzer wanted to be married to one person. She didn't realize she was married to client number nine. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh, this is crazy. I don't know. Client number nine, who uh, my guess is, wanted to ride bareback at some of those uh, experiences he was having with the hookers. Wow. wow. So, you see, she was a good girl. She was there raising their kids and wearing that clanky jewelry, standing around with that, you know, politician's wife's haircut, you know, always looking supportive and everything. And then he goes down and checks into the Mayflower Hotel. So, okay. So so what you're telling me now is that I should just remain a free agent and just do what I have to do. Like, don't get married. Oh, I think if you can find some sucker who will sign that contract, sign him up. But I'm saying there's no benefit for a man to do that. Oh, my God. Benefits like loving children, a loving wife. He could come to. Darling, like, darling, no one no one knows better than African-American women what it's like to have children without a man around. It's done all the time. You can have loving children without being married. Oh, oh my gosh. This is crazy. I don't know. Hang on a second. Lawrence, what did you want to say to Sandy here? And, uh, you know, Tom, how you doing? I've been uh, listening to you for a while, and uh, I, you know, maybe maybe she's uh, just uh, uh, not up up to speed. But uh, you know, what you're saying is, is very true. You know, uh, she just has no idea what the, what's going on in the real world. Well, you know what? That could be. That's that's probably like a small percentage of it. But I think I still I'm optimistic about it. I think I'm more optimistic about marriage i understand what's going on in the real world but i don't know i think i'm more optimistic about that because i think that you know i don't know i think it's a 50 50 thing it benefits everybody like you're with one person you don't have to worry about i don't know just outside problems like when you're with that one person you share everything i don't i don't know he just he just he just told you it doesn't benefit everybody it benefits uh children and it benefits the woman uh the man you know if you can name two benefits the man gets name them I mean, the man, he carrying on a legacy. Like, you know, I don't know. You, I don't know. You have uh, children. Well, you're going to carry on the last name. You know, you're going to teach your children this. You and mean that. like Jesse Jackson Jr.? <laughs> yeah. Who's, <laughs> whose mother's name doesn't have to be Mrs. Jesse Jackson? <laughs> uh, 
Well, well, Tom, you know what? Um, another reason I feel that uh, a lot of black men are not, you know, getting married, and this had nothing, to, this had nothing, to, nothing to do with you, hon. You know, don't don't take any offense to this. Uh, is that a lot of women here in California? Because I live here in California. A lot of women in California are just total bitches. I mean, and so black men don't want to deal with them. So guess what? Okay, I'll, I'll agree to a certain extent. But what I've noticed here, because I'm from the South originally, and I just moved out to L.A., and the black men are not dating black women. So it's like but I don't. We're not it goes, black but it, just, it goes to what I just said, though. Because we're why? Not, because no, black not, women are black not, women are total so. bitches out here. We're not. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Thanks. a bitch come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. Like I think that just black women are just fed up. The black men don't want them. Period. Not out here. They don't. But uh, what? Them. What is it? But what is the reason why they don't want them? There's no, got to be a reason. Because they know that they can get away with whatever with another race. Like okay. Just, no, that's not it. No, no, I don't think me having standards or me ha- asking you to have certain, you know, whatever qualifications constitute me as being a bitch. Like, come yeah, on, well, can you have a job? Is that okay? Can you have well, a job? What, can, you can you provide for yourself? Like, I don't think that's me being a bitch. I just, you know, those are my standards. Like, what's the problem? I don't think all black women are like that. Or, like, majority out here in L.A., I just think that black men out here in L.A., they just want a free ride. And that's it. They're gonna go elsewhere because the black woman's not gonna give it to them. There's some women that will. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the same way in Chicago, Oakland, and other places. But um, you know, I live here, and I just know what goes on right here. And it's not all. You know, you may be an exception to the rule. So let's cut you out. But a lot of them, a lot of you know, black women out here are just. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're, hey, hey, hey! Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> she's, she's getting out of control already. Crazy white girls, crazy Spanish girls. It's all, it's all. It's not only black girls. It's not that. I don't want to want to hear that excuse. But LA, no. Well, they they actually well, well they they well they treat, they treat us better than uh you know than than than, uh, than black women. I tell you that. You can find a black woman to treat you right too. Like I don't. No, you, no, you can't. Not no, you can't. It's very difficult. It's very I difficult. You where are you searching for them? Where are you looking for them? How, how old are you? You at twenty six? Okay, you still got you still got uh, you still got some growing to do. <laughs> I am grown. You but you, you still got a lot to learn. You still got have you still have a lot to learn. But um, you know you'll you'll learn. Uh, look around. You know I mean look around at some of your your parent friends and look around at some of your, your friends and, and really look at them and uh, and look at the look you know look at what the girls are saying. You know your age. I mean you know it's not conducive for a black man to even deal with them. Their attitudes are just, uh, it's just, it's just way out. Oh, my gosh, that's crazy. I, I'm not the only one to feel that way. I'm not the only no, one to feel right. that way. I'm, you're right, you're not. I know, I've had, you know, discussions with other people, but I'm, I don't know, I still stand my ground. Like, I think, you know, if you actually looking for a quality woman, whether she's black, white, whatever, you'll find her. But if you want the easy way out, that's what you're going to just... Too much work! It's yep. like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You know, exactly. <laughs> why wouldn't you want to work? Okay, Tom, before you became like the number one king at your stage, you had to work hard for it, right? You appreciate that, so why wouldn't you work I hard? did, but when I got, when I finally succeeded, I didn't have to share it with anybody. It's all okay. mine. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Now, if I want to give something to a woman, it's a gift. I got I got a I got a uh, out of one marriage uh um uh 7 7 years ago and uh got out pretty easy. I will never do it again. Wow. That's crazy. And, and and again, I'm not the only I'm not the only black guy who feels this way. And if I'm not the only one who feels this way, there has to be a a national reason why black men from coast to coast feel this way and they do. Cuz uh you know, Tom had him on this uh, on this show. He had calls coming in from black men saying uh, certain things about black women, and th- we don't know each other. So there has to be some some thread that goes through uh, the black community um, that affects black you, women. You just don't think that we're fed up? You just don't think that we're just fed up and like we're not going to take it anymore? That's Take what? Take what? Keep standing on the couch, not doing nothing. Get up and do something instead of playing your Sega Genesis or something like, okay, black more black women are going to school. They're going out. I mean, they, black women have to play dual roles. They have to be the... That's mother. why we're doing you a favor. We're saying we're going to let you live by yourselves. Then you'll have nothing to complain about. The Tom Likas Show.